What if I told you that your electrical engineering degree doesn't make you stand out anymore? Today, we'll discuss what certifications actually matter for electrical engineers. There are three different types of certifications that you can put on your resume that'll help you advance your career and stand out. The first type being professional certifications that add credibility, and that's where you have those letters after your name. We'll discuss those. Then you have industry specific ones that are tied to whatever it is you're gonna specialize in, whatever industry you're gonna go into. We'll cover a few of those. And then at the end, you have this cybersecurity umbrella that everyone is sort of looking for now. And remember, the goal here isn't just to collect certifications or letters after your name. You want to build up yourself and in turn your resume so that you are an ideal candidate for your dream role. So if you ever wondered, what can I do to stand out on my resume in the interview? What can help me get hired? What can help me have a higher pay? You're in the right place. Let's get started. Adding professional authority does wonders for your career. And these ones are not tied to any specific industry. They're more general across electrical engineering and engineering in general. So those are things such as getting your professional engineer's license. In the US, it's called the PE. For the professional engineer's exam here in America, you typically have to be working for four to five years, depending on if you have your bachelor's. And prior to that, you have to take the FE or the Fundamentals of Engineering exam. And that I recommend strongly to do while you are in school. A terrible mistake that I made was not taking that FE exam because I was knee deep in my master's and I just sort of let it slide. I didn't think that it would be that important, but lo and behold, after entering my industry, which is the power industry, come to realize, oh, the PE is not a bad thing. So do your research and figure out if the PE would be required for the industry that you want to reach. Industries that I know a PE would certainly help you out would be in power delivery, in MEP, that's mechanical, electrical, plumbing type industries, construction, things of that nature. The PMP allows you to be able to understand how to properly manage and deliver projects on time. So a lot of the PMs, the project managers that you'll see, a lot of them will have this PMP certification. If that is the route that you want to go into, then I suggest you look into it. And typically it can take about three to six months or even longer, depending on how fast you want to go. I'm sure it can even be done in probably less than three months. The MBA is universally known for being a business degree and you dive into all avenues of business. You'll dive into leadership, you'll dive into marketing, you'll dive into product creation, entrepreneurship, understanding how to network, lead. All of these things are covered covered in your MBA. I do not have my MBA. However, I have started other companies in the past and I feel like I have some of that experience hands on and just kind of learning it the hard way. And I do feel that that experience that I have has helped me out tremendously, not only in my career, but in my life. It improves the way you communicate, you understand how businesses operate and that's required, especially if you're looking to get into management. And there are many good universities here in the US and I'm sure internationally also that have very good MBA programs. Something else I have to mention here that adds to professional credibility is simply just getting your master's. I made a video that talks about the benefits and the cons of getting a master's. It'll show up over here. Getting your master's tells everybody that you are starting to specialize, right? You know what industry you want to be in and you want to learn as much as you possibly can about it. If you have the opportunity to get your master's and you know what sort of role you want to be in, what industry you want to be in, I do recommend it. But check out that video if you haven't seen it. I dive deeper into that. The next batch are industry specific. So now electrical engineering might be the most diverse field that you can get into in regards to how many different industries you can enter and how many different roles that you have. So I cannot cover them all, but I'll talk about three that are perhaps the most common. The first one is just power. In the power industry, there are many different avenues to take, specifically if you are looking to specialize in software. There are countless softwares to mention in the power industry, and you could dive down each one and get certified to become a professional in that software. However, that might not be the best use of your time just because different companies and different utilities might use different software. So some common ones are ETAP or PLS CAD for transmission lines, but I would focus more on just core knowledge. If you're going to dive into power and you might want to do protection design, then you want to just take courses on protection controls engineering by say Schweitzer Engineering Labs or Cell in America. So, and they offer onboarding certificates without any prerequisites. You'll have to pay a little bit of money, but then you can put on your resume that you've taken these relay protection courses through Schweitzer and everybody in the industry knows what that is. Something else that's not a certification here would be to take an industry specific training program. So for instance, in this example here, if you're studying power and you want to understand substation design, the University of Wisconsin has an incredible substation design course, which I've taken before. And if you take this course, it's about a five day intensive program and you dive into all aspects of substation design. You don't go too deep into it, but after this course, you now know 
what is required. And you could put that on your resume. Even though it's not a certification, you can have continued education that shows where you want to land. And that's very impressive if you're talking to a recruiter or a hiring manager. In telecom and communications, another huge field that double E's enter, employers love seeing networking credibility. So certifications from Cisco, who is the leader in network infrastructure like the CCNA or the CCNP, immediately signal that you know how to configure real routing and switching systems. If you're in wireless or carrier infrastructure, things such as the 5G training from Ericsson will also help you out. Or if you're in a fiber, then things such as the CFOT from the Fiber Optics Association, they tell employers that you can own both the physical and the communication side of the system. Another major avenue for electrical engineers is in electronics and embedded hardware. So things like PCBs, microcontrollers, understanding how the hardware works and being able to use your hands here is key. Things such as the CET track, which is the Certified Electrical Technician track from ETA, will be a good place to start. You might be saying, well, hold on, I'm an engineer, I'm not a technician, why should I be taking things for a technician track? Well, being able to use your hands and understanding not only the theory and the application of it, that's the sweet spot in all of engineering. If you can do that, you are signaling to whoever it is that you're speaking to, your potential employer and everyone else, that you know how to use both the knowledge that you learned in theory and the applications, and that is priceless. That is the sweet spot that you wanna be in. So don't downplay all of these just because because they say technician in front of them. As previously mentioned, there are many different avenues in electrical engineering that'd be difficult to go over every single one of them. Here's a table for a couple different electrical engineering pathways, a few that I didn't discuss here, and what certifications to look into for those roles. And finally, regardless of what electrical engineering pathway you go into, we do need to discuss one final layer of certifications that encompass all of this. And this is now security, resilience, cybersecurity. These are issues that have become very important and at the forefront of what everything that we're doing, because it's not just connected in the hardware sense now, everything is entering the ether, it's all cloud-based, and it's important to understand that. When I was graduating about 15 years ago, the one that was important for us was OSHA. OSHA is certainly still a thing over here. That's the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. And so I ended up having an OSHA certification. And all of this cloud cybersecurity stuff was not nearly as important as it is now. Now it's crucial. All this connected infrastructure now has to be protected. So it's not just about what you design anymore, it's how you can protect it. And if you can secure what you design and deploy, then you join a very small group of engineers and electrical engineers that have the knowledge and the experience in being able to protect the systems that they're built. And the two to look into are the CompTIA Security Plus Training, or the industrial security framework from ISA. There's also a cloud awareness one from Amazon Web Services too that you can look into. I'm not saying that you need to take all these certifications. No, it's just important to pick and choose based on what it is that you wanna do. So remember, your degree gets your foot in the door. You wouldn't be able to have this interview if you didn't have your electrical degree. That's still the gatekeeper. Now your certifications, things like the PE, the PMP, MBA, those ones that are kind of all encompassing, they will signify somebody that a, you've taken the initiative to go a little further and that you are serious in becoming a professional. However, that's not it. The certifications that you can put on your resume that you've actually taken the time to not only have the theory from your, your education, but also now hands-on experience or hands-on knowledge, that is what's gonna help you stand out. I hope that's helped you out. And if you're in any of these industries that I mentioned, what did I get right? What did I get wrong? Please leave me a comment below. I read and try to respond to every single one. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.